gang, let's do a bit of an addendum to the SS Stewart guitar. It's been a few days with the strings at full tension and it's relaxed into its new shape. The action has come up in that time an additional half sixty-fourth. So it's around 6.5 sixty-fourths. It's around a hundred thousandths of an inch or 2.7 millimeters. And the belly has bulged like it's at the hot dog eating contest. You can see from side to side it's giving us an air gap of about seven or eight millimeters. Two would suffice. Along the grain it's the same story. A ladder brace guitar usually has a wide brace under the bridge and one more narrower, taller brace behind it. In this case the brace is not able to counteract the string tension. But this can happen over time. If you saw this much deforming in an X brace guitar we might suspect that the brace ends have come unglued or broken from the top, but you know, this seems fairly common in older ladder brace instruments. They just deform this way. Could it be rebraced? Of course, but we have to reckon with the fact that the soundboard has become used to this configuration that it's in right now. Taking the back off and doing a conversion to an X brace would likely solve that, but again we're talking pretty big money. On a special guitar it might be worth it. Um, the owner in this case has very little invested in this beyond the repair cost, so it's so far it kind of makes sense. The Bridge Doctor can be a help in this situation because it's very cost effective. No, this is not a paid endorsement. I just think they're useful and it's kind of fun to see the effect they have. Everyone asks, will the addition of the Bridge Doctor change the sound? And the answer is of course yes. Everything changes the sound. Everything. Raising or lowering the action, regluing a loose brace, warming or cooling the instrument, it all has an effect none of which rivals what happens when you change the strings. It won't fundamentally alter the character of the guitar. This is a ladder braced instrument. They tend to be kind of brash and clangy, good for singing railroad songs and that sort of thing. It's still going to sound like itself. How about the volume? Well, it's a two-way street. We might be tightening up portions of the top, but then again, you have to remember it's currently loaded in a very sort of unnatural shape right now and flattening it out might actually allow more of the soundboard to get in the game and vibrate for us. The only way to check that out would be through spectrographic analysis and decibel meters in a lab setting. Empirically, it works to straighten out the guitar, so we use it. I'm going to forego the pearl dot they give you and instead make a wooden plug, because it might look funny having three dots there. I want to put this right between the G and D strings, and reasonably centered on here. This is a quarter inch brad point drill. I'm starting backwards so the spurs will lightly score the surface and uh, prevent tear out. Mm. Nothing smells like Brazilian rosewood. Now I'm making a through hole with a 964 bit. I'm backing up the wide brace on the inside with a piece of wood so when the bit exits it doesn't tear big chunks out of the surface. I'm countersinking the top of the through hole with a standard quarter inch twist bit for the tapered head of the screw to sit in. Now depending on the width of the bridge plate in there, there are a couple of options given to you. You can move this uh, central post fore or aft. I think I'll try it. Um, in the default setting there and see where it aligns with the front of the bridge plate. Um, I might have to move it to the forward one. For the initial setup I'll install the dowel holder. Sometimes it's possible to do this without having the dowel in place. Other times the depth of the guitar body and the height of the back braces can make it difficult. Yeah that lines up with the front of the plate. I think that's going to be fine. I inserted the dowel, which applies pressure to the end block and marked it for length. And I need to cut that back by about 3 eighths of an inch, 9 millimeters or so, to leave room for the screw, which will apply pressure to the dowel. Pretty simple system. I happen to have on hand an old broken Brazilian rosewood bridge from which I can cut a quarter inch plug. I use just a small amount of glue around the top edge 
trying not to fill up the screw head in the event that this needs to come out at some point. After it's glued in, I will slice it off with a flush cut saw and then uh, pare it away with a chisel and finally sand it smooth before applying a quick coat of oil. This is for those several people in the comment section who tell me that they love it when things go wrong in my videos. I was just stringing this back up with a fresh set of strings and I heard a poppy cracky sound which is generally speaking not what you want to hear and the action got real high again and uh, I noticed this. This previously glued crack has decided to come open and it's taking with it the end of the heel. So, <laughs> I'm going to glue this thing together again. Put a bunch of cleats on the inside all the way along. I'm drilling a small diameter access hole through the end of the heel and to the intersection between the side and the heel block. I'm going to squirt a bunch of glue down in there, hoping that at least some of it gets between the side and the block. Back to making cleats. So yeah, I guess this isn't a short and sweet little update anymore. You guys get to watch my descent into a maelstrom of lunacy. Was it hubris? Am I Icarus with wings too close to the glue? My evening plans have now been altered. So the main offender runs right along the top of the curved lining strip there. I have to bridge it with cleats, and to do that I need to pare away part of that lining. So I've made up a little cutter that I can drag along the back and score through it. You wonder how I get red knuckles, huh? Once I've scored a line, I get to pare, chop, and scrape away using a chisel at the end of my reach. Uh, this is one of those times where it's important to see what I'm doing. I can't do it by feel, even if I hear Obi-Wan's voice telling me to use the force. It simply won't guide my actions accurately enough. There they are, lined up like little soldiers. Okay, my brain hurts. I was inspecting with the mirror, checking out the cleats and everything, and I've uncovered something that just boggles the mind. It was reasonably well hidden. You wouldn't find it without uncommonly careful searching. But it solved a mystery. Because I was thinking to myself, if it was just the side crack alone that loosened things, that should have had little or no effect on the ability of the heel to rock away from the body the way it was doing. Because there's no looseness around the dovetail for it to do that. I'll try and explain it. This is the neck block. You may recall that there was a split through it, parallel to the top, which I glued up when the neck was off. Flashback to a previous episode. But looking at the sides of the block now, with the mirror, I see a savage little crack that runs vertically. You see it there? With the red arrow? That's where it is. And it appears on both sides which is like death. Uh, sinister. The top surface is still glued to the soundboard. Seems perfectly sound. And so is the bottom surface. It's affixed to the back. But the crack runs all the way through such that the neck side must be loose. So that when string tension hits it, it hinges away. I'll draw a diagram. You won't be able to visualize it, and photos aren't really going to do it. Figure 1 is the block from a low three-quarter perspective. You see the crack. It may run through the front of the dovetail pocket. Figure 2, this is how it behaves under string tension. See how it hinges up there. And figure 3, it's the solution. Short of completely rebuilding this guitar, the best way I can see to move forward is to use screws through the front of the block to clamp it while gluing, and aesthetics be damned. I'm going to leave them in there for insurance. The neck block is about an inch and a quarter in depth or thickness, which is around 30, 32 millimeters. These screws are 25 millimeters or one inch long, so they're not going to come out the other side unless I sink them too enthusiastically. And I'm going to have to drill pilot holes using a jeweler's drill by hand. 
It's going to take some time. I know there are people who are going to suggest I have like a flexible hand shaft or something like that. I don't think I could ask it to make the kind of bend it needs to bend through the sound hole. Like it's, I don't own one, but even if I did, I don't think it would work in this case. Extended scenes of repetition become funny, right? Mm, this is a good time for me to post the retraction. When I was talking about the history on this thing, I mistakenly identified Chicago musical instruments as the owner of Harmony and K, etc. And that is, of course, wrong. If I'd thought about it for a while, I would have put the pieces together, but I picked that up from a couple of online retailers and a blog post uh, in what is a case of someone on the internet probably a long time ago posting an authoritative sounding piece of information and then everyone who wants to sell one of these things ever after cuts and pastes the inaccuracy into their own descriptions. So, you know, it happens. When I do the history parts on these, I usually spend like five or ten minutes, just check a few sites and get my head around it. Uh, and then I just get right into fixing, because I'm not trying to be a primary source musicologist. I don't have time. I wish I did. I love learning these things. And I keep a lot of trivia in my head, but, you know, sometimes inaccuracies get introduced. So, we'll thank Kent Hughes for pointing that out. He's got a Harmony 1203 on his um, channel that's been converted to an X-Brace, and there's also a video of another SS Stewart. So I'll post the link to his... Um, channel in the video description. Video description is also where you go to find the link for hats and shirts, because some people were having a hard time finding it. The response on the merch has just been simply fantastic. I mean, I can't thank everyone individually, but I want you to know I really do appreciate the enthusiasm over it, you know. I've made enough that I'm going to try and buy a better microphone for doing my voiceover parts. Having drilled all the pilots, I'm going to go back with a slightly larger diameter drill here, it's larger in diameter than the outside of the threads, to provide clearance holes so that, because um, it's going to be very difficult to clamp this thing, obviously, uh, and the two parts, I want to make sure that they're together um, so that the first half of the block isn't riding up the threads, if you know what I mean. People who do woodworking know what I mean. You know what I mean. i got to make the holes bigger. Part of the hole is bigger. I gotta work around the corner and inject glue into the side of the block, which is not an easy thing to do. So I'm gonna make an extended syringe using some heat shrink tubing. I'm just gonna slip that on the needle there and shrink it. That should be enough friction to hold it. Don't breathe the fumes. And uh, now I can sort of direct that in there and squeeze as much as I can and get as much glue down into it. I'm going to try to do this as neatly as possible, but it's not going to be very neat. I think volume is going to be a consideration. Might actually have to do it blind. Sorry guys. For all those who worried about how I removed the tone nails, I've reintroduced screws and that's an upgrade to the sound. Finally get to release the clamp. And there we go, finally. The action has been stable and nothing's coming apart so far. They don't always go according to plan, you know. And once again you might ask, was this worth it? And again, the conclusion is, maybe? I guess. I mean, it depends on where you want to put your money and your time. This was more difficult than building a comparable guitar. I definitely spent more hours on this than it took the workers at Harmony to put it together. Eh, say la vie. From a qualitative standpoint, I think it actually sounds much better now that I've got the Bridge Doctor in there and a neck that's not gradually breaking off from the guitar. It sounds more focused. I'm going to do a little riff here on something from the Nutcracker, the Pas de Deux, for those who want to know. Mm -hmm. 